Okay, let's do a spin-off video from that really exciting game which had the Queen sacrifice here. So he played B6. So let's turn on the engine here for the truth checker of this. Truth detector. Apparently Bishop H3 was winning. I actually thought taking and what I played was close to being winning because of Queen A6 maybe. Uh, but it turns out that uh, although this might be an improvement on, on taking, uh, this doesn't work here. Takes takes Queen A6 is no good either. Rook C3 didn't turn out, but these moves are quite good. Queen A8 and Queen E6. But let's just check Queen A6 because uh, there's an advantage now that Rook B8 could be answered with Rook C3. Just to prove that Rook B8, Rook C3, and I'm holding the pawn. Uh, the thing is, he just plays in this position Rook B7 with a huge advantage still, with his bishop uh, supporting that. And apparently, there's no way uh, this this is a crucial discovered check tempo on the king, so I can't get uh, behind it without the the crucial discovered check. Um, so uh, more uh, more critical is Queen E8 or Queen E6. Okay, so let's let's just check for example Queen E8 and a variation I prepared earlier. Um, let's just go into the variation I checked out earlier. So say rook b8, and now the key thing about queen e8, it facilitates queen e3 check. So if I'm going to get my rook behind the pawn and sacrifice the rook to get two rooks for the queen, it's not so bad because apparently this d pawn is quite good. Here, yeah, this d pawn can be pushed, and this might be quite good. Uh, so say this this kind of position, he could be prepared to sack the exchange because he's got a running a pawn. But this should be better for black now. Uh, so something like h5 to h3. That looks quite a good plan actually. Um, so even keeping the tension. If I don't keep the tension, even that that should be okay. But not not as um, good. Not keeping the tension because um, he's got the running a pawn. I think easier would be just this h5 idea actually in this position h5, if he does nothing, say he moves the pawn, I think h4 is going to be really dangerous for h3, I suspect. h3, bishop, where is the bishop moving? There's going to be serious trouble here. Queen e2. What's going on here? Oh, taking that pawn. <laughs> Cheekily, okay. Is there anything better than taking the pawn? Oh, okay. So, um, also, uh, yeah, there is a potential threat with the rooks running at the moment. Um, what is the other idea behind that anyway? Um, in this position, it's worth taking the pawn. Ah, check. Pieces are loose. Okay. Uh, so let's throw in a check here that's going way off. Loose bishop, finally. Uh, hasn't got many squares. Queen f2, okay. So some kind of horrible disruptions can occur once a pawn gets on h3, that's the point anyway. Well, let's, let's go back here. The crushing move, let's look at the most crushing move for this queen sacrifice, the antidote in, in the theoretical world. It's actually bishop h3. So for example, uh, b7, so I can take on g2. Uh, say he sacks the queen as one line. I can just take the pawn here. So there's a deflection to take the pawn rather cheekily. In another line, say he just queens. Um, if he... Um, she can't just queen here, can he? He just gets mated. So we have to go with this. Uh, rook takes g2. That's that's fairly convincing. So bishop h3. Was there another line for bishop h3? Not particularly. Uh, rook takes c7 is also winning for black. <coughs> Even that in queen. So, so that was clearly winning bishop h3, it seems. Easy to say with an engine, super power engine. <clears throat> what can he do about this? Um, <clears throat> say King H1. Just take. This, the idea is deflecting, really. That uh, 
Oh, this is just mating. No, the idea of that is mating. Okay, so that's fairly fairly uh, fairly uh, clear cut. What about rook ff two? Check maybe as strong as well as whatever it's suggesting there. Check, check. So this is all pretty pleasant stuff to do with bishop h three and not avoiding his. Um, evil scenarios of, of the queen sacrifice it seems the queen sack has got some soundness to it even with queen a6 here and uh, there's rook b7 it turns out I don't know if you can see that if I can drag that up you see rook b7 um, so that's that's pretty interesting that bishop h3 the g file focus not sure what what it would do here looks as though that's winning so just to recap oh there's another possibility is queen sack here take the queen whoops even take with the king's bar for black uh, so here just bishop takes g2 here and if rook takes then uh, queen takes b7 if he queens I think he just gets mated bishop f3 mate him free so this is under the scientific lie detector of the game that uh, this might have been a tissue of lies this queen sacrifice with b6 but it requires uh, going outside of the context of what he might have tested and just testing his king's safety with bishop h3 something to bear in mind maybe on the in the future for such a uh, to, to refute someone's uh, queen sack on the queen side <laughs> The pass pawn um, cooperation of the rook and bishop is impressive here. So even after a b. Now the other line just taking, I think that was more clear cut for white. Clear cut advantage here. Even though temporarily a queen down. Nothing is working here for black at all. Truly in his t tested uh, territory. Actually rook b8 is given about equal. But bishop b7 better for white. So let's see, you say rook b8. Brook d1, why is this equal? I'm taking, say, h3. Oh, it's a perpetual check scenario. Or something. Bishop f3, it's all. Is it, is it a perpetual check scenario? I guess it's going to be. Check. Ah, oh, check. Yep. Perpetual check scenario. So there was there was some flaw here, uh, but in time pressure, of course, it's difficult when you've just been stunned with a queen sack. So bishop h3 seems to be the way. Um, as far as early in the game, we could just quickly see the evaluation shifts of the game. So white was slightly better. Um, b5, okay, knight a5 was the only move basically. Valuation shifts white slightly better through, throughout this game. Now here's sort of equalising. I don't know why. Oh, e takes and g takes. That the swing on the dark squares or something. Now white slightly better again. And uh, now I mean rook g7 really should be celebrated later with. Uh, with a further like G file attack ideas, uh, which I tried to generate, of course. I don't know if I missed out something obvious. We're going to find out about this attack. So Bishop H4 apparently better for Black. Not sure why. Is it to do with Bishop takes E1 here? Say Rook D2. Oh, bishop takes e1, rook e3. The g file attack is more pronounced here, I think, with bishop f3 on the cards, and also if takes, that's a big pass pawn. So that's interesting. What is he going to do here? This looks like a big advantage to that rook e8. What's going on? I've got. F I'm going to get four pieces on on. G2. Get the queen out of the way first with queen h5, apparently. Then 
then strike again this this balance with the queenside initiative strike on g2 just in time queen h3 similar similar themes to before getting really critical over here just intensifying the pressure on g2 and this this should crash through just before the the pawn uh, gets dangerous queen sack here let the queen queen over there that's mating probably again mating free with queen e3 check Here and then again picking up the pawn probably after the check I'm picking up a few pawns first surely the idea is just rook take c7 well that will do anyway so it's interesting this balance between the queen side and, and the g file the crude g file attack is actually worth more than one might realize as a counterbalancing method well that's what i was playing for but um it seems this this queen sack was a real shocker so Oh, where else did the evaluations uh, shift apart from bishop h4 when this rook was here? So bishop h4 and rook e3 as well. So then white was again slightly better in theory. And then after this, I was better again. Bishop f3 again. Okay. Bishop f3 here. Let's go with this. Queen h5. Sack the queen side. What is he doing here? Has to sack his queen or something again? I think he's king side's in trouble again. This is past pawns really worth the weight in gold. There's queen d1 check here. So say here, there's queen d1. That's mating two. So it seems as a as a again a balancing of tactics on the king side again. So bishop f3 there slightly better. So here uh, b6. So the key move here bishop h3 as as previously discussed. So that's pretty interesting stuff. I hope you've enjoyed that uh, quick uh, truth detector test of the game. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.